every time there's a new season of The Mandalorian, I like to build a project that's somehow related to it. First it was Mando's helmet, then it was an entire life-size bust, and this time around I've really decided to overdo it and build an entire droid. The problem when you wake yourself up at 3 a.m. to watch the latest Mandalorian episode is that afterwards it sounds like a grand idea to see if you could challenge yourself at building an entire life-size IG-11 before Mando gets around to fixing him in the show. So that's the plan we're rolling with. <laughs> Welcome to my attempt at building IG-11. I'm of course using the droid division files for IG. They're seriously always the most meticulous and well thought out designs for 3D printed droids. My plan this time around is to print the pieces at the highest quality I feel comfortable with so that I have as minimal work later on finishing and smoothing things out as possible. It's still very much winter weather in Canada, so I don't have the luxury of being able to spray as much filler primer as I'd normally want on these pieces. To get through printing IG as fast as possible, that means I've got the whole team going. I've got my Ender 3 V2s running with 0.4 millimeter nozzles at 0.2 layer heights, and my Ender 3 Pro and CR10S will be using 0.8 millimeter nozzles at 0.32 and 0.4 layer heights, depending on the level of detail in the pieces. So I got a bunch of files sliced up and they are now starting to print, which is super exciting. I did not go through all of the pieces and get them prepped. That would have just been way too overwhelming and confusing. Using. There are a ton of pieces with any droid build, so I mostly just focused on the legs and sort of like the lower half of the body. To keep myself organized, I did something that I don't think I've actually done before, but because I'm trying to print this as fast as possible, it seemed like a good idea. So I made a list of all of my printers and then figured out which way I wanted the pieces printed. Like some of the pieces have to go on my CR-10S just because they're larger. There are always like sliced versions of any big pieces that could fit on like an Ender size print bed, but I have a big printer, so I might as well just print it in one piece so that it's less work for me later. And then of course there are some pieces that I want printed a certain way. My one ender tends to have a 0.8 nozzle on it all of the time and then my V2s have 0.4 nozzles. So anything I wanted printed at a higher resolution I sliced for the V2s and anything that was like a more straightforward piece like the thighs and like the shins and stuff that they're really just sort of poles that have maybe like a bit of jutting in and out, but overall really simple pieces. Those will just be going on my Ender 3 Pro with a 0.8 nozzle and I'm probably going to print those in PET G all of the time or PETG. PET G, PETG, which way do you guys say it? On top of all of that, there will be some extremely detailed pieces that I will want to be printed in resin. The resin prints I'm really not concerned about right now. I really was just looking at which ones I might want to end up being in resin. Resin prints always go way faster and I have significantly less of them to do, so those will be done later on or I can just chip away at them gradually when I get a chance to, you know, get that printer rolling as well. And yeah, I guess we will check in on the printers in a little bit. This is actually my last printer that doesn't have a magnetic flex sheet on it and I of course want to use this one for PETG and use this textured build plate just for safety. So we're gonna go ahead and install that and then get this thing printing. These PEI flex plates are one of my absolute favorite printer upgrades and are something that I regret not adding sooner to my machines. If you don't have something like this yet on your printer, I highly recommend looking into them. Once I had the new bed installed, I moved this printer into my makeshift basement setup because I was worried that having all of the printers running in the closet was going to blow a fuse. So you're not gonna see much of what this one was busy printing, which honestly was mostly more straightforward, boring pieces anyway. As for the more exciting pieces, IG's feet were something that I immediately prioritized. They're one of the largest single pieces on him and because they're so important structurally, I knew they were going to need to be printed strong, taking even longer to finish printing. They ended up being the longest print jobs at 33 and a half hours each when using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. 
So here we have the first foot, which is also my very first print in PETG. And I was really nervous about it because you probably can see this is quite a complex foot. There's all of these cutout areas that of course needed support. There were some areas that I wanted to try and go without support, like back in there, because I knew I would never be able to get it out. And of course, PETG is kind of more infamously known for having supports that just stick too well. You know, you're not really supposed to use a cooling fan because it will possibly like delaminate the layers and have them not stick together. But this actually turned out really, really great. And I've already, you probably can tell, have removed supports to see if it was any more difficult. And as far as this piece goes, it is just as like easy to remove supports in my opinion as like a PLA piece like if I had printed this in PLA so that is awesome I still haven't like taken out all of these supports yet in fact let me just show you so for these little like inset areas I was just using this scraper which one second before I slice myself I was just using it and like poking the edges so after just sort of breaking up the top or bottom like that. You can get the edge of the scraper in there and then this thing really will just fall out like that. Easy as anything. Yes, there's a little bit behind, but like nothing that isn't going to be super easy to clean up. I will say though, this is one of the pieces I did with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at 0.32 millimeter layer heights. And I did my support trick, which is I print the supports at a 0.4 millimeter layer height because 0.8 millimeter supports are just way too strong. So that is also probably why I'm not having any difficulties taking the supports off. Off. So there's a little trick for anyone that likes printing with a bigger nozzle. You can actually change the line width for the support material so that it isn't like unnecessarily strong. And I've never had a problem with printing supports this way. They always succeed in printing. Yes, they're technically under extruded, so they can look a bit funky, but they still do their job perfectly fine and they're not a nightmare to remove. So now that I know that PETG isn't a complete catastrophe in terms of like overhangs and supports and stuff, I'm gonna go slice a whole lot more files to use it because this is probably gonna sand twice as easily as the PLA pieces. So that's gonna save me a ton of time and effort later on in other ways when it comes to smoothing these out when I need it to look like flawless metal. From there, it was really just a ton of slicing and printing files, switching print jobs as soon as they finished for the next piece. I did have one little misprint though. It happened on one of the thigh pieces and as you can see, the top is missing. Since this is such a straightforward piece, I decided to save it as opposed to reprinting it by measuring the height of both the cutoff piece and the good piece, calculating the difference between the two, and sinking the model into the build plate in Cura so that it only prints the part that got cut off. It's a really simple process and it can save a lot on plastic waste from misprints. Here is the piece bucket so far. It is now Monday night, so this is like five to six-ish days of printing, and I actually have the legs up to the abdomen fully printed. So I think I'm going to cut these poles down to size. You can see I already have the markings on them there. Cut them and then do a bit of a test fit for the legs because I really want to see what this thing looks like together. Welcome to my workshop in progress that I really should be working on instead of being distracted by droids. But anyway, putting this all together felt like building a droid shish kebab and I was so excited to see what the legs looked like put together that I 100% put the feet on the opposite leg so please ignore that. Also before this, I did remove, albeit very roughly in some cases, all of the support material on the pieces so that we could get the full effect. I didn't actually even use all of the pieces that I had printed at this point on these legs. By the next morning, I had a whole batch of prints finish practically at the same time, which meant IG very quickly went from just the legs to all of a sudden having a torso as well. I printed the upper torso pieces without much infill to keep them light, so they were finished much faster than expected, and they were 
were really the last large pieces, with the arms being skinny and smaller print jobs, which took no time at all to complete. Soon enough, I realized that the only pieces I had left to print were the head pieces. I decided to print the animatronic version of the head files because I'm hoping that I'll be able to figure out the electronics to really make IG come alive once I get to that stage in the build. Because I was on the last round of pieces, I figured now would be the time to look at some of the parts that I wanted to resin print. I knew there were some pretty important pieces, like all of the fingers that I wanted made out of resin, so even though I wouldn't normally worry about any resin pieces until I absolutely needed them, I wanted to have them on hand so that I could do a proper test fit of everything for IG. It's Friday now, and this is the final piece of IG, which means I somehow managed to print an entire life-size droid in 10 days. Now, there are a couple of internal working pieces that I haven't printed yet, just because I'm not gonna need them for like way further down the line in the project, but I got the entire main body done and even like 95% of the detail pieces. So I think it's about time that we take this and the rest of the pile of pieces and put it together into something that resembles a droid. Here is IG, all seven feet of him. <laughs> Since he's fully printed and put together, that's probably a good place to end this video. Obviously in the next few weeks, I'm gonna be finishing up and painting him, but since I've already done 10 crazy days of full printing, I figured this video is probably long enough. Thank you so much for watching and IG and I will see you in the next video.